Hey guys, I decided to make a, a little video here of um, the money end and where I stand right now with the plan that I started a year ago and I told you guys about. Okay, the money management, the um, project management, the whole nine yards. So I'm going to give you some details and I also, it's going to be an interesting video if you have the ability to take notes and listen without somebody entertaining you okay so that's I'll tell you now if you don't have a good one if you do hang in there you'll like this okay so let me get started with this thing I want to talk about making money with the Woodmiser LT15 sawmill because that's the kind of mill I have but it doesn't matter any mill that you have, including circular mills, will apply to what I'm about to tell you. I guess the best way to start off is to tell you that the wood miser mill does not make money. The wood miser LT15 makes lumber out of trees. I know that's obvious to a whole lot of you, but you would be surprised how many people it is not obvious to. But anyway, it does it very efficiently, but you need to be mentally, physically, emotionally, and monetarily up to the challenge of making this happen. If you want to make money using lumber as a way to get there. How much lumber is worth depends on several things. All of the things I'm about to mention. So I have them numbered and you can write this down or you can remember it, it doesn't matter to me what you do with it, but this is good information that I know. So number one, the quality of the trees or timber that you acquire. The quality of the trees or the timber that you acquire. You have to know the species of the tree, the approximate board feet you will get from the logs, and you need to know what length you will buck the logs before you cut the limbs off the down tree. This is critical, especially in negotiating the price you pay for the timber and how much you sell the lumber for. Let me just tell you something. I laugh at this every time I hear it. Free lumber is not free unless it is placed next to the wood miser for you. Okay? Otherwise, you pay to go get it. Number two. You have to be prepared to stack and dry the lumber. Whether you kiln or air dry, you will need stickers. Lots and lots of stickers. The quality of the stickers will determine to a great extent the quality of your dried lumber. What size sticker does not matter, as long as you make each layer of lumber a uniform thickness. Just for a side note, I used 266 board feet of lumber to make red oak stickers. That wood is worth $2,128, but it's worthless except as a sticker or kindling once you cut it up into those four foot lengths. So there's a huge amount of money there just spent for that reason. Okay, number three. You have to be prepared to store dried lumber and mill it if necessary. I recommend milling it as soon as it is dry, but that depends on what the lumber is destined to be. The more stable the moisture in the final storage area, the better. Preferably 7 to 9 percent for hardwoods, up as high as 19 percent for soft construction lumber. If you think you're gonna if you think you're gonna get away with selling wet lumber that will crack, shrink, and warp, you better start thinking again. Because once people know what you're selling them, you may lose valuable customers. Make sure they know that it's not dried if you're selling wet lumber. I'm not talking about lumber for outbuildings here. You know, if you guys are building a barn or whatever, just like my chicken coop, if they're building stuff like that that's fine but I'm talking about quality lumber worth every penny you get for it. You need to, uh, number four you need to understand the grade dimension and the value of lumber all kinds of lumber. Lumber comes in a multitude of shapes and sizes you need to know all of them. 
if you're going to take advantage of the market prices that you can get for lumber. You need to know the value of what you cut your lumber into so you are not losing money. 2x4s are cheaper by the board foot than a 1x12. But 1x2s are cheaper by the board foot than a 1x12. That means you don't store all 1x12s just to cut them into 1x2s later. Well, you don't cut 2x4s out of what you could use for quality 1x material. This same idea applies to hardwood, but in a little different manner. Doesn't matter. You've got to think about what the wood's going to be used for and where you can get the most amount of money. You need to understand the market where you'll be selling your lumber. Always be looking for a new market. Okay? Because the old things tend to go away. Alright, number five. You need to have enough capital to survive the time it takes to get lumber to the market. Alright? You need to have enough capital, that means money, to survive the time it takes to get lumber to market. If you do this as a living, it could be tens of thousands of dollars. If you do it as a hobby, it still costs a considerable amount of money. If you've seen my video, my YouTube videos, you know how hard I've worked in the past 12 months. I have, to, uh, I have tried to explain every step from the concept idea of, of how I needed red oak for trim and how the money was going to pay for the sawmill and all, okay, to the finished product. I've tried to show you every step of the way. It's not just the labor that I put into it. The, the labor is not the most important thing, but think of this. I had to have the money for fuel for tobacco, the pickup truck, the chainsaws, repairs on all those things I just mentioned, chains, motor oil, oil filters, chainsaw bars, transmission fluid, air filters, gas filters, antifreeze, hydraulic oil, even a new transmission. And I needed to pay for electricity for the shop to make the jigs that I made, sharpen blades, and I needed to heat the garage. Now, whether I would have heated or not really is not the issue. This is a matter of, I'm trying to explain to you what I did in project management on how things add up, okay, and expenses. At this moment, I have $13,600 worth of red oak boards. That's what's in the greenhouse. $2,000 worth of red oak trim, $3,200 worth of maple, $1,850 worth of framing lumber, $2,300 worth of one-inch one pine boards, $6,144 worth of red oak that is air drying, and $6,400 worth of red oak waiting to be milled into trim. That's what I have right now on the ground. That totals $35,494. Now think of this. How much will all the furniture and the balance of the molding and other products I build be worth? I don't even know the answer to that. But unlike some little kid who gets bored with a new toy, I will see this through to its completion. If you watch my videos, you'll see me finish that house. And you'll see me build furniture. I started off with needing $16,000 worth of red oak to break even. In one year, I more than doubled that and increased my net worth by over $20,000. This is known as wealth, and this is one way to build wealth. Okay? Now, I had a friend of mine mention, say to me that unless I sell the wood, it isn't worth anything to me. Oh, you can't be more than wrong unless you're going to take it and throw it out in the woods or cut it up and throw it on a pile like I see so many people doing and not use it for what it was initially intended. If you bought a sawmill so that you could say I have a sawmill and you cut up lumber and throw it on a pile and never intend to build anything from it or use it for something or sell something from it, you are wasting your time. Okay, you need to have some of those things, some of those ideas in hand. I have a friend in South Carolina that's so busy cutting his own lumber and trying to make all the little things he makes, and he makes all kinds of stuff. Him and his wife. 
It isn't even funny. The guy's going crazy with trying to do all the work he has. Anybody can do this. You just have to be thoughtful. You have to figure out what you're going to do, how you're going to make things happen, and then do it. Do it. That's the biggest problem that's, that we have in this country. People don't want to do nothing. Anyway, guys, um, if you listen to the video again and you add up some of those numbers, you'll see how much this all costs and how much you can earn from this. And like I say, for me, I'm content with knowing that when I sell that house, either I or my uh, heirs will get the money. It doesn't matter to me right now because I'm fine the way we are. I'm just saying this is one way that you can build wealth and that's only from like one and a half guys or and I say half because Carmine's only here half the time a couple months doing this work by himself. Okay? Although I didn't cut the trees down by myself but the milling and stuff. Okay? Have a good one. Good night.